Welcome to Kidney News, I'm your host Prasad. Now that Bursatu has been abandoned by Amno, Bursatu has tasked Muhyiddin Yasin to play matchmaker in search of the party's next partner after a string of disastrous relationships since its inception. The Bursatu Supreme Council has given a full mandate to party president Muhyiddin Yasin to explore cooperation with other political parties. This is in order to face the next general election after being divorced by AMNO. In a statement, Bersatu Secretary General Hamza Zainuddin said the council arrived at the decision in its meeting yesterday, which was chaired by Muhyiddin. Hamza said the council discussed matters related to party management, the latest updates into the country's politics and the outcome of the recent Johor state election. Earlier this week, AMNO Secretary General Ahmad Maslan said the party and Bersatu have divorced and will not collaborate again. Ahmad confirmed that AMNO will not work together with Bersatu in the highly anticipated GE15. Yesterday, the Bersatu youth chief said Malays need a protector. Today, Said Sadiq has hit back by questioning how Malays have benefited from such protectors in recent times. Muda President Said Sadiq has rubbished the claim that Malays want a protector because of a tribal mentality. Instead, the Muar MP said politicians who claim to protect Malays have done little to actually do so. He said, instead, these politicians have been living in a bubble of luxury. Said Sadiq questioned how the Malays have been protected when 600,000 M40 households slid to the B40 group. He also questioned when Malaysians had to wave white flags because they didn't have enough food during the COVID-19 pandemic, how were the Malays protected from hunger and sickness? Said Sadiq was responding to Bersatu Youth Chief Wan Ahmad Faisal Wan Ahmad Kamal, who yesterday said Malays need a protector. Wan Faisal has since clarified that he disagrees with this mentality, but said it was a fact nonetheless. The Deputy National Unity Minister also said that identity politics is still a major factor in Malaysia. Wan Faisal added that is the problem with centre-left parties such as Muda which downplay this point. Meanwhile, Said Sadiq said this was the usual tactic of those who want to scare and divide Malaysians. The Muda leader said politicians must move past the racial politics of old which only benefits elites, relatives of politicians, and cronies. Bahasa Melayu or Bahasa Indonesia? Which language should be ASEAN's second language? An Indonesian minister's remarks have sparked that debate. Malaysia's proposal to strengthen Bahasa Melayu by making it ASEAN's second language has been rejected by an Indonesian minister. According to Indonesian news portal Kompas.com, Indonesia's education, culture, Research and Technology Minister Nadim Makarim has announced his reservation on the matter. This was expressed to Malaysian Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob during his official visit to Indonesia last week. Ismail Sabri also proposed for Bahasa Melayu to be used in every official meeting between the two countries. Nadim reportedly said that Bahasa Indonesia is more eligible to be elevated to such a position, citing its history and linguistic values. Nadim's statement contradicts a message conveyed during a joint press conference held by Ismail Sabri and Indonesia President Joko Widodo on Friday. Both leaders reportedly expressed their agreement to further strengthen the use of Bahasa Melayu in the region. Calling for all Indonesians to defend Bahasa Indonesia, Nadim claimed that it has become the most prominent language being used in Southeast Asia. He also said Bahasa Indonesia has spread to 47 countries around the globe. My Sujatra check-ins could go away in the near future, but masks will likely remain a part of our daily lives a bit longer. Face masks are still needed for the current transition to endemic phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is according to Health Director General Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah. In a statement today, Nur Hisham stressed that Malaysia has not entered the endemic phase and, hence, measures are required to protect the old and the frail. He added, even endemic diseases such as HIV, tuberculosis and malaria still require active intervention to reduce spread, suffering and deaths. 
He elaborated that although a large proportion of the population has received their primary COVID-19 vaccine dose, wearing masks and physical distancing is still necessary during the transition to endemic phase. He said this is to protect those who are still vulnerable, such as children, the elderly, and those with low immunity. Nur Hisham said Malaysia was still defined as an infected local area under Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act until June 30, 2022. This means COVID-19 protocols, which include masks, are still in force. Speaking of masks, soon they'll need to be certified by Serim. Manufacturers and importers of non-medical face masks must apply for MS Serim certification and labeling from Serim, effective July 4. The Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry said the ruling comes following the gazetting of the trade descriptions, certification and marking of non-medical face mask order 2022 under the Trade Descriptions Act. According to the ministry, the move is to ensure that non-medical face masks produced locally or imported comply with the set safety standards. It said the MS Serum label must be placed on the boxes or packages and must be easily visible to consumers. Companies failing to comply with the regulations can be fined up to 200,000 ringgit, while individuals will face a fine of up to 100,000 ringgit or imprisonment of up to three years or both if convicted. A land sale in Sri Iskandar, allegedly done without the state government's permission, is being probed by the MACC. The MACC is investigating the sale of land proposed for the development of an international airport in Sri Iskandar. The investigation was launched after Manjoy Assembly person Asmuni Awi lodged a report yesterday. Pera MACC Chief Mohamed Fauzi Mohamed said the graft buster will call up several individuals to assist in the probe soon. Fauzi, however, refused to reveal the names of the individuals concerned. Yesterday, four state executive council members in the previous Pakatan Harapan government, including Asmuni, called on the MACC to investigate the sale of land belonging to the Pera State Development Corporation to a private company. They claimed that the matter was never discussed at the State Executive Council or the PNKP Board of Directors meetings during the Harapan administration. The matter came to light after Assembly Person Nga Komeng during the Pera State Assembly sitting last Tuesday claimed that the land had been sold without the state government's permission. Popular YouTuber Namewi has lost control of his channel to Russian hackers. Now he's on a journey to get it back. Malaysian rapper Name Wee is fighting to restore his YouTube channel after it fell prey to Russian hackers. Following the hacking, hundreds of his videos disappeared overnight. Lamenting on Facebook, he said his channel has been operating for 13 years. He also took the opportunity to voice his support for Ukraine following the Russian invasion. The rapper's Taiwanese agent told the Taipei Times that his management team had reached out to YouTube for assistance in restoring the music videos. Prior to the hacking, his channel had recorded over 3 million subscribers and 1.4 billion views. A native of Muar, Johor, named Wee, is a graduate of Taiwan's Ming Chuan University. He has also been nominated three times for Best Mandarin Male Singer at Taiwan's Golden Melody Awards. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kintv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad, thank you for watching.